In this video, we'll talk about the basics of discrete random variables. Uh, we'll also introduce probability mass functions and expectations. So suppose you flip a fair coin twice. What's the sample space omega? Well, it's just the set of four outcomes, heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. Usually we don't care about the exact outcome, like heads, tails versus tails, head, but just that the fact that we got exactly one head. So uh, a random variable is defined to be a numeric function of the outcome. What does this mean? Let x be the number of heads in two independent flips of a fair coin. Then x is a function which takes outcomes in omega and maps them to a number. So for example, x of heads heads is two because there's two heads for this outcome. x of heads tails is one because there's only one head. x of tails heads also one and x of tails tails is zero. So uh, that's the summary of what we just said. Um, the set of possible values x can take on is called its range or support. And it's denoted omega sub capital X. And if omega x is finite or countably infinite, usually a, sub, a subset of the integers or all of them, x is a discrete random variable. Uh, otherwise, omega x is uncountably large, then x is a continuous random variable. So let's try to classify some. So the number of heads in n flips of a fair coin, the range is uh, the possible values you can take on, which is from 0 to n. And it's a discrete random variable because there's only finitely many outcomes. Number of people born this year. That can be anywhere from 0, 1, 2, and there's really no upper bound. So it's the non-negative integers, and it's also a discrete random variable because it's a subset of all the integers. Uh, the number of flips of a fair coin up to and including my first head, uh, well, it takes at least one flip, and then, but it could actually take arbitrarily long. And again, this is a subset of the integers, so it's a discrete random variable. The amount of time I wait for the next bus in seconds is actually uh, can take on any value in the continuous interval 0 to infinity like because you can have decimal waiting times like 3.65 seconds this is a continuous random variable because it's a uh, like it has like a interval now the temperature in celsius of liquid water uh well li uh, water freezes at zero and boils at 100 so anywhere in not including uh, is the range of liquid water and again this is an interval so it's a continuous random variable so now we're going to see this example again of flipping uh, two coins. We already defined x of the outcomes. What is the support range uh, or range? It's actually just 0, 1, or 2 because those are the only values x can take on. Uh, but what are the probabilities x takes on these values? For this, we define the probability mass function of a random variable x. Uh, we denote it p sub capital X, which maps uh, outcomes in its range to 0, 1, such that px of k is the probability x equals k. So for example, the probability x equals 0 is 1 fourth because that corresponds to this outcome. The probability x is equal to 1 is 1 half because uh, the 2 out of the 4 outcomes correspond to x equaling 1. And the probability x equals 2 is uh, also 1 fourth. So the probability mass function just uh, summarizes the probabilities of each outcome. And notice that uh, each x taking on each value in its range form a partition of omega since each outcome is mapped to exactly one number. And hence, if you sum over the entire range of the probability, um, that sum has to equal 1, because exactly one thing happens. Now let's talk about the expected number of heads in two flips of a fair coin. Well, I think it's just 1, but how do we show this mathematically? Since x is the number of heads in two flips of a fair coin, uh, let's first denote this as the expected value of x, uh, e of x. How do we get this number? So imagine we repeated this experiment four times. Then we would expect to get each outcome exactly once. Heads, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. So then we could just divide by the number of times that we flipped four to get one on average. So two plus one plus one plus zero over four. And how do we get that? Uh, let me just split it like this first. And you'll notice that on the top here, this is x of heads, heads, x of heads, tails, and so on. And the probabilities here are the probabilities of those outcomes. Um, and this actually equals one. So this is actually the sum over all outcomes of x applied to that outcome, because x is a function, times the probability of that outcome. Another way we can write this is we could group the ones together. Then we get uh, 2 times the probability of x equals 2, 1 times the probability of x equals 1, and 0 times the probability of x equals 0. So this is another way to compute expectation, and that's just the sum over all values in the range of x. So each value k, and we take k multiplied by its probability. So it's actually the same formula as this, except there was uh, we grouped these outcomes together. So these are two equivalent ways to compute the expected value of a discrete random variable. And this interpretation is that we take a weighted average, and so this will be the average outcome that we expect. 